So I investigated the five branch menorah, but then I started asking myself, what about the seven branch menorah? Like, what's up with that? Like, why are there seven branches? What's the symbolism behind that? So I want to offer a few um, ways to understand that. And uh, just before that, though, I want to just give a little background on what the menorah is, and then we'll you know, touch on the different explanations for its symbolism. So the menorah um, was, in, was uh, one of the vessels in the temple. Um, you can see it on uh, Titus's arch ever in Rome. There's an arch there with all, when they, when they, um, it depicts the removal of all the different uh, vessels, several different vessels from the temple by the Romans. They brought them from, from Jerusalem to Rome. And one of the, the central vessel there is the uh, menorah. Menorah was used in the temple. It was lit in the evenings. Um, it was lit in the evening. In the morning, it was also, it was the, the Ner Tamid was lit on it. Maybe that's another symbol, the Ner Tamid, the, the eternal light, was lit in the morning. But for the most part, all seven candles were lit by the Kohen every evening. Um, and one of, the reasons for, one of the reasons it's offered for that, why it was lit in the temple, is because when you're, when you're away from home, the lights are off. When you're home, keep, you turn the lights on. Or when you go away and you don't want other people to come in your home, you turn the lights on. So the idea is that this is God's home. We have, God, we have to have light here. That's one explanation. Another one is that like, when you light the candles, um, it actually spiritually brings down light and sustenance to the nation. That's a little more of a mystical explanation. It's interesting, in King, in King Solomon's temple, people don't know this, but he had 10 menorahs in his temple, not just one. Some people say 10, some people say 11, but um, just, the, the Bible says it. So it's interesting to note that. Um, so that's kind of a little bit on the, uh, on the menorah. The menorah was pretty high. It was five, foot, five feet high. So when the cone would light it, they, there was like some, sometimes they, they would go up on a step and they would light it. And uh, that's kind of like the idea, of the, the basics of the menorah. Now, what do the seven, seven branches symbolize? So I started reading a little bit into this book, and he, he, ta- he brings um, Josephus, who was a historian at the time of the destruction of, of uh, the temple, he says, he gives a reason for it. He says that these seven, seven um, branches, well, let me go back. Anybody have any thoughts on this, why there could be seven? Days of the week. Days of the week. Okay. That's one explanation. Any other thoughts on that? The, I don't know why I'm looking at you specifically, but, <laughs> but you look like you have an answer. <laughs> the patriarchs, the patriarchs. Oh, okay. Three, three and four. Three patriarchs and, and four matriarchs. All right, so those are two really good ones. So Josephus offered one that you wouldn't have thought of. He says it corresponds to the seven planets, right? But, so he says, but he says like this, there's the sun and the moon are two, and there's five visible planets. And then so I started asking myself, like, what does that mean? Why do, I, why do we need to know about the planets in the temple? I, had a, it's, I have one thought on that. Maybe it's the idea that God that the, they believe that the planets were affecting us spiritually and that is to give us some sort of security. The fact that we're surrounded by these spiritual lights and we're, everything's okay. It's not so clear. He doesn't explain why. He just says the seven planets. Okay, that's one. Another one that's offered, and this is a more modern one, and you'll see why, is that, and here's up here, you have the Jewish star, you have the Magen David and the menorah. So um, the, there, the, or, there's, we have the oral tradition and the written tradition. The written tradition and the oral tradition. The written tradition is the Tanakh. That's one book eight of 24 other books, but it's one book. That's symbolized by the middle uh, branch. And in the oral tradition, there's six, six sections of the Mishnah. And so it could represent the idea that you have to have both written and oral tradition. And that's maybe why it's an important symbol for us, because we're always in that, little t- in that tension between tradition, on one hand, the, the, the written Torah, and innovation, which is the oral tradition. And we need both of them to have the full light and blessing of the Torah. That could be another one. But that's a more of a modern explanation because there weren't six books of the Mishnah in biblical times. There, there weren't books. It was, all, it was the oral tradition. So that's more of a modern explanation. I saw that in, in, on a Chabad website. Okay, so here's uh, some of what you mentioned. Um, this explanation is brought also in Josephus. He says, I was, this, is, I quote, um, this is a quote. He said, um, uh, a wrought lamp being attached to the extremity of each branch of these were seven indicating the honor paid to that number among the Jews so he's basically saying seven is a really important number among the Jews um, it could be the seven, seven, seven is pretty central in the Torah you have the seven days of the, the seven years of the Shemitah Shemitah year the, uh, the sabbatical years you have the seven days of the week 
And so maybe he's alluding to kind of what you're saying with the seven days of the week. And there could be a deep message for us in that whenever you look at the menorah and you see the seven lights, oftentimes we, we get caught up in, in the past and the future and we have fears. We think, we think, what's it going to be like tomorrow? Maybe we, we lost a loved one. Maybe, um, maybe we're going through hardships and we've experienced God's closest in the past, but sometimes you feel like you're in complete darkness and you feel alone. And when you look at the menorah, it, it, it reminds you that not just yesterday and not just today, but every single day of the week, God will be with us and, and will be there to comfort us when times are dark. I think that's an, that's an important idea uh, that we can think about when we look at the menorah. It could be uh, what he's hinting to here, um, the idea that this is an important number for Jews. So those are three ideas um, to think about with the menorah. Uh, the planet's one, the idea of that we need the oral written tradition, and more importantly, God's light always being with us every day of the week.